Shalom and welcome to the Rapture Daily Devotion. And this morning, we are continuing our teaching on a overcoming or managing and overcoming trials of life. This is part 25. If you have missed any of the parts, you can refer to the Global Christian Duty YouTube channel. You'll get it there. There are teachings that have inspired a lot of people. You know, encourage and strengthen believers who are going through trials of life from family to family, from tribe to tribe, and from nation to nation. This morning, we are looking at uh, the vows that make true Christians overcome trials of life. We are looking at the vows that make true Christians overcome trials of life if you are going to overcome the trial you are passing through maybe your own trial of life is that you are married without children maybe your own trial of life is that you are sick in your body you've been praying and yet it is getting worse no solution maybe your own trial of life is that you are not married and you are looking and you are mon- you are you are you know going above the the monopause age or maybe you have you have a, you have lost your job. There is no work, or your children, your parents don't have money to train you in school. Whatever it is they are passing through, you cannot pay your bills. Life is biting hard on you, or you have a ministry and your ministry is not prospering, and you are struggling and struggling, and life is unbearable. There are certain vows that uh, you must make. I will only refer to some, then I will leave you to be able to, you know, look at your situation very well and make vows, the vows that will make you, you know, not to fall, not to succumb to pressure. There is a need for vow, especially when one is passing through some troubled times, some hard experience of life. We discovered from the book of Job that why Job was able to overcome his trials was because Job had made certain vows. Let me read Job chapter 27. I'll read from verse 3. He said, All the while my breath is in me and the Spirit of God is in my nostril. Verse 4 of Job chapter 27. My lips shall not speak wickedness. This was one of the vow that Job made. That in the midst of his adversary, in the midst of his troubles of life, Job made a vow that his lips will not speak wickedness. He said, no, my tongue utter deceit. Job made a vow that his tongue will not utter deceit. Verse 5, he continues. He said, God forbid that I should justify you till I die. Job refused to justify evil people. To justify polluted, perverted people. He, He refused. He made a vow. God forbid. That I will justify, you know, you till I die. Talking about the the scorners and the mockers and the the people that came with, like we looked at yesterday, you know, he, the, Job was able to discern them that the spirit that they were speaking from was the wrong spirit. And we saw also yesterday that, you know, various instances of the Bible where, you know, people spoke, you know, directly from, you know, through the spoke and what they were speaking was actually you know, coming from, you know, unclean spirit, familiar spirit, demonic spirit. So Job made a vow that he will not say, he said, God forbid that I should justify you. He said, till I die. He continued in his vow. He said, I will not remove my integrity from me. In the midst of his adversary, Job vowed that he will not remove his integrity from him. He will remain as righteous, as upright as he has been. 
So if you are going to successfully pass trials of life and come out victorious, you need to make vows. And one of the vow is the vow not to remove your integrity from you, no matter what. Job continued, verse 6. He says, my righteousness, I will hold fast and will not let it go. <laughs> what a wonderful vow. A vow to hold for his righteousness, no matter what. So I will not let it go. No matter the trouble, no matter the hunger, no matter. Some people, because of troubles of life, maybe so, you know, some of these women, there is a case of I was reference of a woman who because she want this piece, she wanted to get a child and she was cancer. And she go and sleep with another man in order to get pregnant. And she went and did it. Because of pressures of life. But Job said, No, I will not let my righteousness slip away. Brethren, the time we are in is a time that genuine believers, true believers, true Christians must take a vow, make a vow. A vow not to let their righteousness sleep. Because many people are already, there are people are backsliding. People, pressures of life is making people to soil their garment and soil their hands. People, it's terrible what is happening. Yeah. You see people, you know that these are people who used to be, who, you, who used to be born again, genuine believers. But you look at them today, brother, you shed tears. You shed tears. Because pressures of life have turned them into another thing. Troubles of life. So it must take a vow. Job did vow. He said, I will never let my righteousness slip away from me. I will hold fast, hold fast to my righteousness. Amen. And, and then Job continued in his vow. Amen. He said, my righteousness, I will hold fast. And will not let it go. He continued. He said, My heart shall not reproach me so long as I live. He made a vow that he will not allow his heart to reproach him. You know, the, the worst thing that can happen to a man or, or a Christian during trials of life is to come to a point whereby your heart itself begin to reproach you. That is the worst thing. You know, people reproach from side is not as worse as your heart to come to degenerate to a level whereby your heart is reproaching you. Ah, that is the worst case. But Job took a vow. I will not let my heart. People can reproach me outside, but within me, no, 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 no. I will stay confident in the Lord. I will not let my heart put me to shame. I will not let it happen. Brethren, we must vow. Take a vow. And, and, and trust God that God will strengthen us. It's just for a while. No matter how dark the night is, the day will down. The day will break. No matter how long. Because, you know, when you are passing, you know, when somebody is under affliction, you know, I don't know that you have passed through, you know, afflictions of the night, you know, you are having pain. Maybe you have a pain in your body. You could not sleep. It looks as if the night is no longer, you know, is no longer maybe, let's say, from 7 p.m. to, to 6 a.m. in the morning. Again. It seems as if it's, a, it's, it's 36 hours. The night will be very, very long. So it's what keeps us in this, you know, hours of temptation, hours of trouble. This trial time is the vow we make. And if you look at verse 7, Job tune, you know, change the tune of his prayer. He said, let my enemies be as the wicked. And he that rises up against me. Amen. amen. He said, that rise up against me. Amen. So Job prayed. Amen. He prayed against the enemies. That the Lord would treat his enemy as the wicked. I know what Job said about the wicked. How God will read, we begin to read from this place down. You know, Job began to talk about what God does or does to the wicked. And Job said, let my enemy be as the wicked. The Bible said the wicked shall be, you know, shall be beaten down. You know, the wicked shall be destroyed. All manner of things, the Bible spoke about the wicked. So Job was saying, let my, that is a prayer tone. 
a, a judgmental prayer to let you need to be judgmental in your prayer when you are passing through trials of life. You say, Let my enemy be like a wicked. That is, God should treat them as he treat the wicked. You know, God tramples the wicked on their feet. God destroys the wicked. He brings them to ruin. He brings them to destruction. And so shall it be to every enemy. You know, the people that the devil use to organize trials against your life, they are enemies. They are enemies. The witches, the wizards, the occult men, the occult women, the priests, or you know, on those wicked occultic altars. There are human agents that the devil use to orchestrate trials and trouble for believers. So you need to pray yeah. as you take a vow, never, never, never to succumb to pressure. You must also be judgmental, be aggressive in your prayer. And you know, one thing that Job did not do is that, thank God he prayed against, but he didn't pray against the, the, the devil himself. So in your prayer, you must, be, you know, when you start, you look at the way Job started, Job chapter 27, he started by, you know, you know, you know, talking about God bringing trouble upon him. It was not God. It was the devil that was the architect of everything that Job passed through. And the devil organized people around Job, you know, whom the devil was using to torment Job so that Job can be pressured to succumb. I pray in the name of Jesus that no enemy will be used to bring you down in Amen. the name of Jesus. The Lord will give you the strength and the capacity to withstand, to resist the devil and resist all his agent. And the Lord will treat the enemy the devil have organized against you as the wicked. And the judgment that is due up for the wicked, they shall, they, shall, they shall reap that judgment in the name of Jesus. Please, really do you have anything to say? Yes, I really have to say. Uh, varieties, I know from what this, I know there are varieties of vows now. Mm. What? We have uh, uh, vows of action. Mm. Which is, uh, I will do this, I will do that, like this integrity sort of, that, oh no, I will not let go my integrity. That's one. Mm. There are vows that and the other kind of vows that people are so, this kind of first vow, people don't really think much about it. That, oh, I have vowed I'll live a, a holy life. Mm. I will not go astray. I'll not live the, the, uh, go to the devil's side. But then, people today are more uh, of, uh, are more concerned, are more focused on vows of giving to receive blessing. For instance, that's what we see in churches today. Many, because they love pastor, they think pastor is the one who will do it. They think that he can influence Jesus for them, whether they are, uh, they are doing the right thing or not. They just go on, they, 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 they go and vow, oh, I will buy so, so, so number of things. I will give so, so, so number of uh, amount. I, I have vowed to, to give, uh, 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 buy a car. I have done that to do the work of God. Yet, the, I, I think the more important vow we need to consider is the vows that concerns our lifestyle. Mm. That, yes, I will live a holy life like Job said. I think this is a real important focus that we should have that, uh, this morning. That we have two kinds of vows. The one major vow is that of our own Christian life. Mm. Take, for instance, some years back, it's going to not quite long. I was in a situation, I just vowed to God. I said, look, I'm not going to retire from this, my missionary evangelism assignment until the Lord takes me home. Mm -hmm. Today, that vow kept ringing in my heart. that, And so I cannot see myself, because I see people now retire, they say, because they are age, they are 70, they are this. Now, but now I, I have seen myself as as a captive of the Lord on this assignment, that I cannot vow, I cannot uh, retire. I'm going to do it until the Lord calls me home. That is a kind of a vow, a vow of actions of what we will do. It's different from a vow of, oh, I give this because I want this. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. So it's a real guiding principles and teachings for us. God help us to continue to live by our vows. 
in Jesus name Amen. I think it's a wonderful word sir because what you are saying is very true sir the vow today is a vow that bring material blessing mm. no vow that keep, that bring consecration mm-hmm. the vow to live a consecrated life is no longer people don't take such vows mm-hmm. people don't even care for such vow and yes. we don't even teach that pastor sir yes. we don't teach our, our members to take a, to take vow to make vow to live holy life mm. to make to take vow to live righteous we don't we, are, we don't teach it sir Yes. We only be, people are only used to the vow of a uh, vow of uh, you know vow financial vow material blessing material blessing mm. vow that bring material blessing but they are not taking vow that bring eternal eternal blessing mm. because what we are talking about now is eternal yes sure. because the integrity of job being maintaining his innocence and keeping integrity is mm. what to make him to have to to end up in heaven so sir the emphasis have changed greatly because the pursuit of church today is about material blessings mm. So we have neglected so much, sir. Those days, those of you who were in the SU movement, you know, those days we've read a lot about the SU. Mm-hmm. How people take vow of consecration. Yes. Vow of, like the vow of the Nazarite. Mm-hmm. You know, the Nazarite is a vow. Mm-hmm. That raise up, yes, you will not yes. touch your hair, you will children. not drink alcohol. Yes, you, yes. So, sir, mm-hmm. how many people take such vow again? No way. No way. Because our emphasis have changed. Because the focus of our messages have changed. Mm. Because the gospel has been perverted. Yes. Is another gospel are preaching. When we preach the gospel of the kingdom of, of heaven, the kingdom of God, when we preach that gospel, people will be, will be, will be, will be, you know, they will be enticed. Mm. They will be, they will be inspired. They want the best word. They will be inspired to make vow of consecration. Mm. To make vow of holiness. To make vow of integrity. Somebody say, I'm going to politics. I take a vow. And I will never... Vow is like a public. key, a guide for yes. them. That, Look, yes. I've made this vow. I've made this vow. I don't want... I will not go back. I'm in a public office. I will never steal government money. Yes. Sir, and if there is anywhere where that vow is needed, it's Nigeria. Yes. It's Africa. It's true. Because true. there is so much corruption. Everywhere. We read uh, Psalm 94. Uh, this is Psalm 94, verse 20, where the Bible made something so... You know, he say he talking. You know, Psalm ninety four verse twenty from the King James talks about the throne of iniquity, mm. amen. And by the evil decree, you know, they are, they have made the people to become what they have become. They made life of people to become a misery, mm. amen. NIV says he say he say by he say through corrupt leaders. Mm. Psalm ninety four. Psalm ninety four. Yes, let's let's read it. Very important as we round up this morning. So, so it's very important. We must say. Uh, our uh, Psalm 94, verse 20, I think so. So you see, the problem is that our teaching has grossly polluted everything. Yeah. So we are not teaching people the right thing. And that is why they, it has become a trade by Bata Christianity. Sure. You give God 100 naira, mm. then you vow 100 naira mm. before the altar of God. You are expecting God to give you, and the pastor preach it. They're expecting God to give you one million naira. So it's a trade by butter kind of Christianity that has no value. I think our public office holders need to, you know, be committed to the life of vow. I'm trying to get this some 70. Is it 94? 94. Verse 20. So very, very lovely. Hmm. Sure it's very important. Amen. So the Lord will help us. So look at the Bible. This is where we used to take vow of a Nazarite. Okay, let me read from you see? Psalm. It's Psalm 94, verse 20. Okay. King James say, Shall the throne of iniquity have fellowship with thee. You see, mm. which framement may keep by law. By law. Say, shall the throne of iniquity have fellowship with you? NIV say, shall corrupt leaders, amen, be aligned with him. You see, they make the people misery, miserable by their decrees. Amen, sir. 
The problem is that the corruption, mm. and we corruption has eaten the fabric of a nation. Yes. So our public office order, born again Christians should take vow. Mm. As I'm going it, to it, this it, office, it, it I will. Requires, it requires vow not to fall in. Not to fall. Not sorry. to fall in their midst. It requires vow binding oneself. Yes, but not. I will never take one naira government money. Peter, be know why I like that man, sir. You see, when he was going to become a governor, he made a vow that he would never steal one naira. Hmm. It was a vow. He said he made a vow. He made a commitment. We need such persons. These are kind of leaders we need. We need people that vow. And he now said, "Go and check. If you see that I, I, he, they, he said he never bought land. I mean, in Abuja when he was governor. He said he never had bought land." He never bought anything. He said they wanted to give him. He refused. Even in the state. He said he never collected a land. He never bought a car from government money. Imagine. Imagine. Huh. He said he vowed to make to change. So we need people that will make vow to make a difference in our nation. We need people that become leaders and vow to make a difference. Yeah. Not all this, all this board, this, uh, all this wolfiness of in the house we have everywhere. That is why the problem is even in the in the pulpits are in churches. Of course, they are polluting. The pollution, the kind of corruption going on in the churches is terrible. We need pastors and ministers that will vow to, to stand to stand upright, no matter what it is. The Lord will help us in the name of Jesus. Amen. So God is, you know, you know, you know, at the point Job was saying that, you know, the Lord have tested me, say, and I'll be fine, and I'll come out like I'll come out like good. Mm. So, sir, what we are passing through is a testing period. Yes, yeah, sure. And the pressures are there for us. So, and if we are going to pass this test, sir, we need to make vows. Not yes. one vow, vows. Very various necessary. vows. Very necessary. If you are going to come out, because yes. after this, we are meant to come out as gold. Yes. Pure gold. Yes. So, if we are going to really pass this test, coming out as gold, then vows are necessary. The Lord will help us. Job, you know, definitely, some, I think Psalm 101 says, he said, I've made a vow that I have not said anything that is evil before but my eye. Job made several vows. David also made, made vow with my eyes with my not eyes. to look at. To look at the image. <laughs> so it's a vow. Yeah. The Lord will help us. You know, I, I studied the Ecclesiastes chapter 2 this morning, chapter 1 and 2 this morning, you know, before I even came to the book of Job. And Ecclesiastes chapter 2. Do you know one of the things that, that was so bad about Solomon? Solomon talked yeah. about how he became wealthy. He said, whatever my yeah. eye desired, yes. I had it. And whatever my heart lusted after, yes. I had it, sir. <laughs> yes. yes. That was why Solomon yes. ended up yes. very, yes. very, he ended up badly. Mm. Sir, he said, whatever his eyes wanted, he got it. Mm. Whatever his heart desired, he had it. He, he, he made sure. Whatever would please his, sir. Yes, yes, yes. And that is the life many of us are living. Whatever our eyes want, we get it. Whatever our heart want, we want. He said, if you live that life, you will end up in hell. The Lord will help us in the name of Jesus. We'll know, that was why Solomon had the 700 wives and 300 concubines. Because if you look at this one and that eye, and his eye, tell him, this one is looking beautiful. Someone this one have cuffs. This one, he will, he would. Someone without vow in the Christian race mm. cannot succeed. He will end up like a Solomon, sir. Yes. God loves him. <laughs> that is that. God will, God will give us good things. Mm -hmm. But one can decide on his own to let the good thing be his source of destruction. Source of destruction. And it can also be let it be become source of uh, greatness. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You see? Mm -hmm. So we knew that David was given the opportunities to everything in life is opportunity mm -hmm. for us to succeed or to fail. Mm -hmm. And so, so no, yeah. it all depends now on which way we use it. But mm -hmm. God will be looking at Of us. course. He has released. For the gift of God are without repentance. He has released everything. <laughs> now it's for us to mold. Mm -hmm. So we really need to meditate seriously on it. Mm -hmm. God will help us. Amen. So I think we need to pray this morning, sir. Yeah. So that God will help us to make vow and, and stand by them. To, keep, to, keep it. to not just vow of blessings. Yes. Amen. But vows of yes. eternal blessings. Righteous. Of, vows of, righteous of doing the will of God. Righteous yes. living. Yes. The Lord will help us. So, sir, please, can we pray this morning, please? Can lead us, sir? Hold us, as we had this morning, is that vows, which means determination, 
that no matter what comes, no matter what happens, I will not derail. I will do this. Ah, Lord, help me. This is one of the major key to help us in our race to eternity. Lord, help us this morning to heal to it in Jesus' name. Amen. We pray also for a spirit guide. When we have an open spiritual eyes, a clear spiritual eyes, as Peter said, pray that your spiritual eyes be clear. Amen. 